All right, so I'm sure you are able to see the screen and you are able to uh, get me clearly. Okay, so tonight we're going to discuss um, vectors and uh, under vectors we'll be discussing the cross and uh, dot products. And of course, we're going to be going through the tutorial questions. Okay. So if, if you have any questions or you wish to, yeah, to, to ask me anything about school or any other course, you can simply use uh, these same contacts on the screen. And if you have a friend who would like to join uh, lessons, <coughs> sessions, they can also use the same contacts to contact me. Okay, so let's quickly uh, begin to solve. So we have this question here, and I believe everyone is able to see it. Yeah, so it says for, for the following pairs of vectors, A and B, determine the dot product A dot B. So the dot product of two vectors is simply just um, the normal way we multiply vectors. But one thing you should understand when you're dealing with the dot product is that, um, one thing you should understand is that, let me show you something, is that i dot i is equal to what? One. And then anything, when you dot two uh, different unit vectors, um, that gives you a zero. So meaning i dot j, the answer is what? Is zero. Or j, oh, sorry, i dot k, the answer is still zero, but um, j dot j, the answer is uh, one, and k dot k, the answer is still one. Yeah, but when you have um, i, um, we said i j zero, i k zero, uh, you can also have uh, j k, <coughs> j dot k, the answer is still zero. So all these, if you are dotting two different unit vectors, the answer is zero. Then if you're dotting uh, two same unit vectors, the answer gives you one. So this is, a this is the reason why if we have the, the, for instance, the first vectors that we have, we have uh, vector A, which is um, I minus 5J minus 2K. And then vector B is given as negative 4I plus 2J, then plus 8K. You have these two vectors, and then you've been told to dot them. So if we say a dot b, so a dot b is simply just the same as multiplying these two vectors. So when we multiply these two vectors, we have i minus 5j minus uh, 2, 2k. And then we're dotting this with um, b, which is negative 4i plus 2j, then plus 8k. So if you are dotting this, the answer that you are going to get is simply um, going to be a scalar. Yeah, so the solution after dotting two vectors uh, um, results into a scalar. What does that mean? If we dot these two uh, vectors, the answer, that the, the answer that we're going to get is going to be a number, just a constant. So a dot B will therefore be equal to, so when we're multiplying these two vectors, we have to put in mind that I dot I or the dot product of any two uh, same unit vectors is one and the dot product of um, two uh, different unit vectors gives you what? Zero. Yeah, so you saw what I wrote here. So in other words, we're just going to uh, dot the same unit vectors um, yeah, we only just dot the same unit vectors. So we have i dot uh, negative four i. So this is just the same as saying one times negative four. So one times negative four gives us what? Uh, negative four. And then i times i, it will give us what? One, one times four, the answer will be, um, okay, let me just say, let me just write i squared, it's just the same. And then when we dot this end, that we're having negative five times uh, two, the answer there gives us what? Negative 10. Because there's j there, j times j gives us what? j squared. So j squared is just the same as j dot j. Okay, let me not say j squared. 
yeah, for the sake of writing proper mathematics. Uh, so we say j dot j, we have, uh, sorry, i dot i, j dot j. Then we have negative 2k times 8k. This is give us, this this is going to give us um negative uh, 16 k dot k. Then the other things that you are going to have i dot I mean i dot j j dot k k dot i. All these are going to give you zeros. That's it. that's the reason why we've just decided to get uh um I mean to dot the analysis the terms that have the same uh unit vectors. So i dot i, we said this part will give you a one, one times negative four, we just remain with negative four. J dot j, this part will also give you a one, um, one times negative 10, you get negative 10. Then k dot k will also give you a one, one times negative 16, this will give you negative 16. So when you add this, you are going to have the solution for a dot b. So negative four, negative 10, negative 16, will give you uh, 30, this will be negative 30. Yeah, so this is, um, I think the reason why I told you, or oh, this proves uh, what I told you to say, the dot product of any two vectors gives you what? A scalar, which is just a number, a constant. So this is how you find the solution for these two vectors. So the other thing is the dot product of two vectors can also be written, um, uh, using, um, yeah, it can also be written using sine, uh, rather cos. Yeah, so a dot b, so a dot b is simply just equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b, and then cos theta. So this is mostly used, uh, this is mostly uh, used to calculate the angle between two vectors. Yeah, so a dot b can also be written as a, I mean, the absolute value of um, a times the absolute value of b, and then times cos theta, which is just the same as the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b cos theta. So this is exactly what we are supposed to, um, uh, this is exactly what is supposed to use on the second part, which is part b. Okay, so part B there, the question is saying, we find the dot product of these two vectors, uh, rather, yeah, of the, vector, of the vector A and B. And then we've been given that the magnitude of A is equal to one over four. The magnitude of B is equal to nine over four. And then the angle theta has been given to be pi. Okay, so now we know to say, the dot product of vector A and vector B can also be written as the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B cos theta. So we have been given the magnitudes and also the angle there. So we can easily find the dot product. So the dot product here will be um, A dot B is therefore going to be, so A here, the magnitude of A has been given to be one over four. The magnitude of B is given to be what? Um, nine over four. And then uh, cos theta, cos theta has also been, uh, rather theta has also been given to be pi. So pi in uh, degrees is simply just 180. Okay. So the dot product of A and B will therefore be, so one times nine, that will give us nine over four times four, this is 16. Now, what is cos pi? Yeah, so cos pi, if you want, you can draw the unit circle. If you want to know how, how to find um, these angles in case you are not allowed to use a calculator. So we have pi there. Then here we have zero degrees pi, and then this is uh, pi over two. But of course, I'm just looking. Oh, sorry. Let me use the. The let me write the unit circle first before I put the figure. The what is the angles? So, we have something like this. So we have a zero there, zero degrees there. Then we have pi there. This is pi over two. Then this is three over two pi. 
Okay. <clears throat> so um, we are going to draw a circle with um, the radius one. So here we have negative one, there we have one, there we have negative one, there we have one. So you read the coordinates of these um, points where the circle is meeting the, the y and x axis as cos, comma, sine. So this is how you read that. You read it as cos, comma, sine. And the coordinate here is simply just one, comma, zero. So we have one, comma, zero there. Means that uh, cos, what, cos zero gives you what? One, then sine zero, the answer is zero. Then when we move on to this part, we have zero, comma, one. So the coordinates here are zero, comma, one. So cos, comma, sine. So cos 90 is zero, cos, I mean, sine 90, the answer is one there. Sine, this is 90, pi over two, it's just the same as 90, because we know to say pi is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so the coordinates here, this is what we want. These can be read as negative one comma zero. So negative one comma zero, we know to say we're reading this as cos comma sine. So cos uh, pi, the answer is what? Negative one. So we put our negative one there and the solution gives us to be negative nine over 16. So the dot product of our vector A and vector B gives you what? Negative nine over 16. So it's as simple as this. I don't know if you guys have a question before we move on to the next question. I believe that <coughs> the questions. So we proceed to the next question.